In today's tutorial, let's do the easy ponchos to crochet. This is from two to four years of age and six to eight, but I'm also gonna show you how to change the size too. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today we're gonna work on the easy poncho and I know it doesn't look like a poncho right now because I've been doing the work behind the scenes and this is a really fabulous stitch. So in the pattern, it calls for Bernat Handicrafter, these smaller balls in order to do and this is uh, very similar to the Lily Sugar and Cream. So if you don't have access to a Bernat Handicrafter, you can always use Lily Sugar and Cream. So I have decided to substitute my yarn today to something different using the same size hook, a five millimeter size H. So let me put that aside and what I decided to use is a brand new yarn line called Karen Simply Soft Stripes. So this has a longer striping variegation to it. So do you see the color here of the purple? It goes all that way before it changes. So it's not like it's a very quick subtle change. It is like longer and then it changes and then you can see that here. I then substituted then using white in between and I'm going to show you how I did this. This uh, stitching when you look at the pattern itself you don't physically see the stitching very clearly but I have to say it is really quite uh, lovely to work with. I was actually quite happy with how fast it worked up and it's got some interesting um, three dimensional kind of like texture to it and it's fabulous on the front or uh, back side. So let's uh, begin today. Let me uh, take you through the pattern for first and then we're going to then go into it even further. So let's take a closer look at this pattern here and there's a consistency of this and I decided to do two colors instead of three and you could also do a solid color if you wish. There's some texture to it so a solid color would even be nice and there are uh, one of the children are wearing a solid color look as well. So once you get beyond the first step here, there's going to be seven rows complete. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then it repeats itself and then we go back from two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven and you keep doing that to create the layers that you see. Now because I use the striping it actually looks a lot more complex than it really is but if you can see that there's really six rows that continually repeat each other, it becomes really cool. Now what you're seeing here on the screen is the two to four years of size but there is also six to eight. But what if you have a child in between and what, what can you do even if you want to make it for yourself as an adult. So what if you want to make this bigger? So if you have a bigger size child or if you want to do an adult size, the secret to the multiples of this is three plus two. So if you go one, two, three, if you're chaining one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you keep doing that. Once you're satisfied with the length of your chain, just add two more chains so that's multiples of three plus two. So therefore you can make it any size that you wish and then you're just repeating these rows anyway from two to six once you get started. So two to six, two to six, two to six and you can get to what you need to do for the height. Now what changes for the yarn quantity? That's I'm gonna leave that to you. I don't know what the answer is because the pattern is written for two to four years of age and six to eight but that's just a great solution. So let me take you through a little bit about uh, putting this together and then we're gonna dive right into the stitch work itself and then we're gonna do the final on this. So because I've had to do it in advance, I can show you the complete on how to do this entire poncho. So here's the written instructions and it's really quite simple. It's just one page and you can see that we're gonna make two rectangular panels. So you're gonna do one and then two. Once you get that done, you're gonna sew one together just like you see here and then this edge is gonna then go to this edge here and what is left right in the middle is the neck hole that you see that the children are popping their heads through. So you can see if you look really carefully at the front is that one of the um, panels is coming down on an angle just like you see here and then the other side it will be on an angle on the back side of this as well. We're then going to do some neck trimming and then a final border and then there's also um, a tie at the top if you wish to do that and it's actually quite easy. So I marked on my sheet so what I need to do and you're gonna see reap, uh, going from rows one through seven and it says repeat second and two seventh rows for the pattern. This doesn't mean that you're going to repeat it this time and then it says work another further 21 rows or 27 in the pattern. This here is telling you what you need to repeat but it's not included in this um, count of here. So what I did for myself is that I created a little mini working sheet. Let me show you a closer up of this. 
So in my working sheet I have rows one, this is where I'm gonna start and then two, three, four, five, six, seven and then we have to repeat the pattern and it's said for the two to four years that we repeat so that there's an additional 21 rows. Well there's more than 21 here but I wanted to keep it even in, in balance so I did that all the way. So if you wanna just look at this, take a screenshot and then print it, you can do so. Uh, now is the time to do it. I'll keep my hands out of the way as much as possible and then what you have to do is you have to, you have to, you have to repeat two all the way to seven again then again, then again, and then again and this size of two to four years of age is done. That's your panel, done. So then for the six to eight years of size you have to repeat one more time. So you just, that's why it's got here. So you'll notice that my colors, white stripes, white stripes. So the very one, first one is stripes to begin and then in rows number um, two through three it's always gonna be white. Rows number four is gonna be stripes rows five and six are white and then the final is stripes. So you can make your own colorways if you wish. This is how I did it for myself. There's actually calling for three colors in this particular poncho. You can look at the pattern if you wish but I decided to go for two. Again, it's your creativity. Don't let that ever stop you from being outside of the box and making up the rules as you go along. So let's uh, take a look at the stitches now and let's uh, begin. You'll realize this is quite simpler than you may realize. So let's begin with the slip knot and I am gonna do uh, a changing of size. I'm just gonna make a small swatch but if you're gonna do the two to four years of age you want to chain 84 and if you wanna do the um, six to eight years you gotta chain 90. So that's your secret there but if you wanna change the size to anything else remember it's a multiple of three plus two. So I'm just gonna do that for a small swatch. So I go one, two, three, one, two, three and one, two, three and one, two, three. So say that I'm satisfied with the length. If you're not satisfied keep on going and if once you're satisfied just add two right now and you're gonna keep your um, yarn there and we're gonna move on to row number one. So row number one is just a straight half double crochet across your chain. So you have to go to the third chain. So just go one, two and three just count it. Turn it over, get the back loop only, wrap the hook and going into the chain. So you're just gonna do that and you're just gonna pull through all three loops to create a half double crochet. So moving down your chain you just wanna continue to do half double crochet all the way to the very end. So please do that now and I'll see you back in just a moment. So I've now crocheted to the end of here and now we're gonna do a color change. So if you noticed on my sheet it, number two and three rows are going to be white. So I'm just trimming my work and what I want to do is that I wanna fasten this in so I'm just gonna pull it through the final loop and instead of just having a la uh, lazy loose ends I'm just gonna weave that tail in and out of some of these stitches now for about an inch or two and you wanna do that because a child's gonna be wearing this thing so you wanna really hide in your tails as you go and then trap them into position as you go. Just like that. Okay so let's move on to row number two. So let's turn our work. I'm not gonna trim this out yet and I'm gonna wait. So let's go on to number two. So let's move on to row number two just grabbing my next color and I want to attach it to the end of the, of the top of the first stitch. I'm just gonna insert in and I just want to wrap the yarn that's going to the uh, ball and pull through just to join it and now we're going to begin uh, row number two. So this will be the same every time you do row number two. You're going to chain one and then you're going to single crochet into the same one that you just joined with. Okay. So here's this one. So rows two and three are very similar to each other. It's actually it's what's creating the texture in this thing. So what you wanna do is that you want to um, chain two, one and two. Coming into the exact same stitch you want to double crochet. Yep, that's all it is. So then I'm trapping this work as I go. So I wanna skip two stitches. So one and two, go to the third and I wanna single crochet. That's the repeat pattern all the way across. So here we go again. So chain two into the same stitch as that single crochet, advance two more and go to the third and single crochet. And you're gonna do that all the way across the line. So chain two into the same one and advance. So when you get to the very end of your row what you're gonna do is that you're gonna be left with uh, these stitches left over. So you're just gonna chain two and single crochet like so and in the very last one you'll just apply a single crochet and that's it for row number two. So let's show me, let's show you row number three. You're not gonna change your colors at this time. 
So number three you're gonna turn your work now and you're going to do pretty much what you just did. So let's uh, begin again. So we're gonna chain up one, single crochet into the first one, chain two, one and two and into the very same one you're gonna double crochet. So this one here what we have to do is see where you have the other single crochet that's in there. So you see how it's leaning over. This is to double. This is to chain two. This is single. You want a single into the single and that makes it overlap each other. So chain two, double into the same one. Okay. Then advance to the next single crochet that you run into. It's on the other side there and just single crochet. Chain two, double into the same one and keep on going like that. So just advance to the next single and then when you get to the end which I'm about to, so chain two, you want to double into the same one and then finally you're just going to single crochet into the final single crochet once you get all the way to the end. That's it for this color. So I'm gonna just trim this off now. This is row number three and I'm just gonna weave in my ends as I go and then I'm going to begin row number four and the four is bringing back the purple color. In my case uh, what was it? The stripes are the representing the purple in my particular example if you're following and using that yarn. Okay so these ones here are buried so I'm gonna trap, I'm gonna just trim those out of the way, get those out. Let's uh, clean this up and I'm gonna use a darning needle to hide this last one in at the very end of the project anyway. So let's turn our work and move up to row number four. So let's create a slip knot and move up to row number four. So I'm bringing back purple and purple is only back for one row and then it's gone again. So right what, what we want to do is that we want to go in the, uh, the first single crochet to join. So just going with the, to the ball, the yarn going to the ball, just wrap that. So it's joining and chaining two and that does not count as a half double crochet in this particular example. And so back into the same one you're going to half double crochet. So that's pretty typical for half double crochet. This row is really really easy. So these are the chain two spaces that we advanced and this is the double crochet that was lying on its side. So in this chain two space you want to apply two half double crochets right into that space itself. Then the next stitch is that single crochet. So if you were doing repeating of this last row that it's a single crochet and you're just gonna half double into that one. So uh, this is really easy. So here's the chain two space. You're gonna apply two uh, half doubles into that same space. Okay, the next one is a single crochet. Just put a half in there and then keep advancing all the way down to the end. It's that easy. So because the way it's grabbing it, it creates texture on the other side that you'll see. And then single crochet into the next one and then you're coming to the very end. So don't get confused. You still have a chain two space to play with. So just uh, two halves into the chain two and then a half double crochet into the final single crochet and purple is yet done once again. So let's uh, trim that off. You know when you have bigger examples of the bigger squares you don't change yarn as often as I'm doing in the tutorial. Well t for time wise um, no but um, for these uh, particular examples you don't change color like you don't feel like you're always changing because you have to work your way back and forth. I think the color changes are what make this particular poncho really quite nice. So I'm just weaving in, getting rid of my tails and moving on to row number five. So let's begin row number five. So I'm just going to just get where I was and this is the um, last half double crochet in the single and we want to attach our yarn here. Now rows five and six are both identical to each other. They're just single crochets back and forth. So just attach it, chain one and one single into that top of that first half double crochet. So you got, you can see that you got two half doubles in a row. So all you're just gonna do on this row number five is just you're applying single crochets into each of the half doubles. Now what you have to watch out for is the very end of this row. Remember that we chain two which did not count as a half double crochet and then you uh, put in um, a half double crochet into that same space. So it has the illusion that there's two stitches into the final but you just gotta ignore that, that vision and just see it. So do you see how it looks like there's two? There's only one. One is the chain two and one is the real half double crochet. It works out so you just gotta uh, watch for that. So just right in the top of the last one here it's single like this. So let's turn and work and do row number six. 
Row number six keeping the same color, chain one and one single into each of the singles. That's it for row number six. So I'm just gonna blaze my way across and then row number seven is your next and then you start repeating your pattern again from row number two all the way to seven over and over and over until you get to the size and I provided that sheet already so that you can know how many times to do it but it also says it on the pattern. I have improvised my sheet a little bit to finish off on row number seven uh, when I go to do your panels. Again that's your creativity, it's your call. So here's the end of row number six. It's single crochets and now I'm gonna finish my color and bring back purple once again. And I'm gonna weave in my ends like so. Once you get into the swing of this pattern it really is no big deal. I actually did uh, the entire poncho uh, panels all in one evening. It really did not take long. So let's turn our work and go for purple once again and the purple, guess what it is? If you looked at the pattern you're cheating already. <laughs> if not it's okay too. So right in the beginning single crochet you're going to join and so row number seven all it is it's a half double crochet. So chain up two. So this time on this particular pattern this chain two does count as a half double crochet on this row and so you're just gonna half double crochet into each single crochet all the way down. That's it. That's all there is to this. So now you're just gonna have to repeat rows two through seven all over again. So do you remember what two through seven is? Well if you look at this pink here, remember that fancy stitch work of single crochet chain two single uh, then a double into the same? You're just gonna do that over uh, again and start exactly where I showed you. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna move on in this tutorial and I'm gonna leave the panels for you to be able to do and then you're gonna have a few hours of work ahead of you and then you can come back here and I'm gonna show you how to put them together and then how to finish it off with the necking and the outside trim as well. So once you get a row done just remember get rid of these loose ends. Remember a child is wearing it. If it feels more comfortable for you to put in with a darning needle to hide the ends again that's completely up to you. So I'll see you back when you have your panels done and that's where I'm gonna move on in the next part. So let's move forward in this tutorial and you're gonna have your two panels done and I've already taken care of all my loose ends. Everything is hidden. Everything is gone. So what I want to do is that you're gonna notice right in the very beginning that the starting row here looks a bit different than the final row number seven. You'll see that it's more bumpy and because of that difference you wanna pay attention to where that is. So what we have to do is that we have to put together the poncho in two pieces and to make uh, one piece. So we're just gonna line it up here and we're just gonna line it up here and then we're going to sew this side together. So all I'm just gonna do now is that I'm gonna use a complementary yarn that is pretty much hidden and I want to whip stitch the things together. So what I wanna do is that I wanna kinda look at it here so I'm gonna lay it out just like so. So this one's straight out and back and I'm matching it to what the pattern is showing me. I'm looking at this edge here. This is the starting edge and I'm going to place it down like this. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna use extra yarn right now and I'm going to just tie these together in order to hold it and then I'm gonna come with a whip stitch and just whip it, everything together and I'll show you how to do that. So let me show you how I'm gonna tie it first and all I'm just gonna do is just grab some spare yarn. Chances are you have that lying around your house. And I just want to go in the one side of this and in the other and I wanna tie it. So I'm just going to just put it together with a, a bow tie. Again this is just for holding it for you so that you once you start manipulating this stuff it sometimes gets tough. You can also just go like that if you wish and then just kind of laying it out like this. Okay, you just wanna make sure it's not overstretched and just coming in where you think it matches and you're just gonna put that together over there. So once it's together like this all you're just gonna do now is that you can whip stitch along the edge just like so. So you wanna choose a color that's gonna be pretty good. I'm gonna show you how to whip stitch here and all you just wanna do is just kinda line it up. Don't make anything stretch really weird on this and grab your darning needle and let's grab some white yarn. I'm gonna use white in this case and I'm just gonna whip stitch things together. To whip stitch I've already cut my white strand and I'm gonna create a slip knot on the one side and I'm gonna grab my darning needle and put the other side through the eye of the needle. 
I like doing it like this because I, I get paranoid things are gonna fall out. So I like slip stitching as much as I can. Let me see if I can do that better while I'm chatting with you. And um, just a matter of just, you know, you gotta figure out what's right for you. Um, sometimes I get paranoid when I really have no reason to be paranoid. So okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna start off on the one side, so the purple, and I'm coming to the other side straight across. I'm ignoring that tie, it's just holding it together and I just want to put it, pull it through. Now the eye of this, I want to put the needle through and then that will lock it into position just like that. So what I wanna do is kinda just go down the side and just kinda li line it up as it's going across. Now this um, strand here, I want to lay it down on top so it gets stuck underneath of this as I go. Therefore it's less work to do at the end and if you're not comfortable with that, you can use a darning needle and hide that as well. So just going straight across, this is just a whip stitch. So once you go across, just bounce back on the other side. Just trying to make sure that it looks as even as possible. So I'm gonna leave the rest of the whip stitching to you on this side and then we'll review on how to sew the other side on how you need to manipulate the project because that side, um, it's hard to show that in a visualization. Sorry, I just bounced the, my head off the camera. And I'll see you in a second where I'm gonna show you how to finish this off. When you get to the end, I've already removed my stitch marker that was holding it so I could get a nice clean shot in there. And all I'm just gonna do is just tie this into a knot right into the end. Okay, so I can hold it. Now the secret to things not falling out is to go in and out of things three times. So if you just glide in along underneath the fibers, not on the other side, but just uh, glide in amongst the fibers. If you go once, once across, and then come back in a different set of fibers but really close to it. Go two and three. This should never fall out on you. So because I had you um, do a slip knot on the other side up here and I had you bury it in as you went, that will never fall out on you as well. So now what we have to do is that we have to start fresh again and we have to apply another seam. So what we have to do is that this edge up here, up here has to attach to this side here. Okay, so it has to attach along here. So it's kind of a really weird bend, okay? So what's gonna leave you is a hole and this hole here will be the child. So what you wanna do is now grab more spare yarn. You can use the same pieces if you did. I kinda threw mine out already. So I want to just come into the side here and just match it and just tie them together. Now this has got a weird bend on it so it's not always always easy at just lying it down so you gotta kind of look at it, eye it up and make a really good decision. It's not hard. It's just sometimes hard to visualize. So let's just tie that. Okay and now all I gotta do is that I gotta lie it out so it doesn't appear stretched but it appears to be matching. So I'm just lying it up here and that's where I think it is right here. So I want to join to about there. So before you commit to sewing it, what I would recommend is uh, just stand by for a second. So I'm just gonna tie this and you will see that this poncho is actually, would actually uh, work out okay. So that's what it would look like then on the front of the child. Okay, so there is the neck hole right here in the top and then here's the cross coming down. And if you look at it, so from the other side, you're gonna see the seam line right here. And this would be along the back. So I'd probably leave it folded if I were you, just don't sew the other side of it. And again, just whip stitch along here, just like I showed you. So please do that and I'll see you back here in a moment and we'll move on to doing the rest of the finishing. Okay, so at this point I have my seams done and you can see this is what it looks like here. It looks like it's gonna buckle. That's just because of the way that it's folded in order to create the hole for the head. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna turn this in a way which I already have is that it looks like it's a nice seam line here and you know this is actually pretty cool. So I had you do it so that the outside edge was out here. Do you see that there? And you see it here as well. So let's do round number one. We're gonna start on the bottom edge first and there's two rounds all together. I'm gonna use stripes because I might as well keep it so I can get the color of the stripes along here so then it looks consistent all the way around. So all I'm just gonna do then is just attach it to one corner here and I'm just going to single crochet evenly all the way around. So when I have stitches to play with, 
um, I just have to do it. So I have to go in, attach it, uh, chain one, single crochet in the first and I'm just gonna keep moving along, along the edge. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna keep moving along the edge. So I'll come up and I'll come back and so it's pretty easy to work with. You just gotta go all the way around. So you're just gonna follow it and come back up the other side and then back here and be finished. And then you'll start on row number two and row number two is exactly what you did with uh, that fancy uh, stitch work of um, single crochet, chain two and uh, double into the same one. We're gonna do that as the final. So just single crochet all the way around. So I'm coming up near to the end and I'm on the final corner. There's no special things in the corner at all. Like there's no extra chains or anything. It's just a matter of just single crocheting all the way around and this is it. So what I wanna do is I wanna finish off the stripes color and I wanna bring back the white color as my final. So the white stitches that you saw here was the um, that fancy footwork of uh, single crochet, chain two, uh, double crochet. So what I wanna do is I wanna finish off the final round and it's just a matter of just following each of the stitches going all the way around. There's nothing fancy happening on the corners. It'll automatically turn for you. So let's uh, begin again and I'm gonna grab my white back. I know it's gonna be hard to see here because I have a white background. So I'm just gonna start up in the corner with a slip knot and it's just like what you already did with the white. So just starting right in the corner, just join it. Okay and then I wanna single crochet into the same one. So I chain one, single crochet in the same one, chain two and then double into the same one. So I'm just gonna advance like I did before. So go one, two, go to the third, single crochet. See how I'm burying that in at the same time? So chain two and then double into the same. And I want you to do that all the way around. You don't need to worry about any corners. You just keep following that same idea going all the way around and then that will conclude the outside trim of the base and then we're gonna move to the neck after that. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. Let me get this done first. So I'm coming up near to the end of my revolution and you know what there wasn't really a stitch count or anything in order to make this final row. So you know what you're gonna have to use your own creativity at this point. If you were off by um, a certain stitch sometimes you just gotta fake it or make it. I would not frog out your entire project in order to do your border. So what I would recommend is remember that the multiples of counts were in threes. So chances are if you're off you're only gonna be off by either one or two. So that's really not a deal breaker. So it breaks my heart when people um, rip out stuff because um, they just want it to be absolutely perfect. Well in my world nothing is ever perfect. So I'm just continuing all the way to the corner and remember that there was no special things to be done in the corner and it actually I thought it was gonna buckle up but it didn't. So uh, the designer has done a great job with that in order to make it work. So I'm using my white um, to finish this off. Again colors are really quite subjective to you. I really like the color scheme of this particular um, poncho actually. Um, I think the Simply Soft Stripes really made it pop. So I'm continuing along and if I'm right, right on I'd be shocked and if not I would not be surprised. So there you go. So there you go. So, so I technically have just like one stitch left over so I'm just gonna fake it. So I'm just gonna do that and I'm just going to join it then to the beginning as I did. So just do that and then just use a darning needle to weave in your last edge. We're gonna move up to the neck now and see it looks great. So even though you faked it, it still looks fabulous. So just use a darning needle, just hide in those loose ends and we're gonna move up to the neck in the next part. So let's move up to the neck. So you're gonna have what's called, it looks like a V just like here right in the top. We're gonna start right in the V and we're just going to grab my stripes. I'm gonna use that for one revolution and then the two, um, the second revolution is actually really quite uh, easy to do. So let's uh, begin and we're just going to just go right into the center and just join it. Chain one and one single crochet. So all I just wanna do is trace this edge all the way back with just one single crochet into each of the stitches all the way around. I'm hiding in my loose end as I go right now. You see that? I'm bearing it in. So please do that and I'll see you back here and we'll do row number two together. So as I come all the way back around I just wanna slip stitch to the top of the beginning single crochet. Now for the neck area I'm not going to change the color in the final round and it's just very simple. It's chain at three 
and then one double crochet into each of the stitches going all the way around. So please do that. This is the final round. I want you to slip stitch to the top of the beginning th uh, chain three when you get there and then we're gonna just quickly review on how to do the tie that is weaving in and out of the of the stitches here. I decided to leave it uh, the stripes. I, I love the color. I think it'd be kind of fun at the top. So I'll see you here in just a moment. So as you come all the way back around just single or just slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three. Just like that and we're gonna then review how to do the tie. Again the tie is up to you. If you don't feel safe using a tie on the child's project that's your business. Um, do what makes you f most feel comfortable with but uh, you know that is a personal decision and as long as you secure it nicely and you have some trust in the child as well then go for it. So let's uh, begin. I'm just going to weave in the final edge here. So the tie uh, for is a different size for different um, for the different uh, um, sizes that we have. So two to four years of age it is 36 inches and then the other size six to eight is 40 inches. So all we're just gonna do is just I'm gonna use the exact same color and I want to just grab my chain uh, my strand. Let's get that out of the way. Grab my strand and a tape measure. I'm just gonna leave extra at the end and all I'm just gonna do is keep chaining until I get 36 inches for the size that I'm working on. So please do that now and I'm not counting. I'm just gonna use a tape measure to measure it 3 inches or sorry 36 inches. So once you get your 36 inches done just right at the end just trim your work and just pull that strand through the final loop and that will lock that into position. So when I measured my 36 inches I did not like seriously stretch this. I just kept it nice and relaxed and sitting down like so. So let's grab up our project once again and let me show you how to put it in. So looking at the good side of the project what we want to do is that we want to use the very center piece here and we're gonna have the yarn strand come out of the center. So just uh, just pull this chain through. Don't pull through too much of it at this point. Actually you know what yeah pull a lot of it through. So what I would do is that every two I would just pop it back out the other side. So just come out this side here and then just kind of pull it more that you need. So here's another two just go back to the other side. Use a crochet hook if it makes it easier for you just to be able to grab onto it and then go every other two. If you wish to skip even more than that again that's a personal choice that's up to you and if you wanna go every other one, every other one that's again up to you. So I just I'm continuing to move it along like so and all I just wanna do is come all the way around and when I come around then I'm just gonna pop out the other side here and then these will be draping right in front. So let me get that done. So I've just woven it in and out of the collar just like so and I have them and I never usually put the strands at the same length but if you prefer that just do it. It's up to you. It's your creativity and you can just kind of work things out and it will even up on you and just keep doing it. So if you are concerned about the child taking that tie out what I would do is I would throw a stitch in somewhere uh, along here but don't impact the distance. So if um, they're actually gonna use the tie to pull it tighter just make sure that you set it before you sew it run right here and then this will never fall out. So that's again a personal creativity. So right at the end I left an extra long strand. I'm just going to just pull on it tight. It See it locks it and I'm just gonna just trim it down a little bit nicer and then I'm gonna do the other side. Just yank on it and just trim it like so and all I'm just gonna do then is just tie a bow tie here and I'm not gonna overly tight it, uh, tie it at the top. Um, it's really this chain is really kind of meant to keep the double crochet from overstretching anyway and so then when a child is wearing it then that, that chain will hold it nicely steady on their shoulders. So this is how you do the easy poncho. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I've actually really enjoyed this project. It's the first time I've ever made anything like this and it looks great and um, this is really kind of a fun project. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day. We'll see you again soon. Bye bye.